welcome to GlideFast On Air. Today's webinar, The Connected Future, How to Integrate HR, IT, and Facilities with Nuvolo and ServiceNow. I'm Lauren Jankowski, the Marketing Manager at GlideFast, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm excited to introduce to you your presenters for today. Michelle Murtha, a Senior Business Process Consultant at GlideFast Consulting, and Chad Till, a Partner Alliance Consultant from Novolo. Before we get started, we'd like to give you some background information on GlideFast Consulting. Um, GlideFast Consulting is a consulting firm that is dedicated exclusively to ServiceNow. And as an elite ServiceNow partner, our expert team of developers and architects have worked on both sides of the table, on the customer side and the consulting side. Our company was founded by ServiceNow Architects and we're proud to have a team of over 100 experienced consultants, an average CSAT score of a 9.6, and many more accolades as you can see here. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Chad Till um, to tell you guys a little bit about Novolo. Thanks, Lauren. Novolo's Connected Workplace is the only integrated workplace management system completely built on top of the ServiceNow platform. We enable business processes and full management of operating technology within a scoped application that's available in the ServiceNow store. We're excited to partner with GlideFast, who's helping us to build additional business value on top of your existing ServiceNow investment. So today, Michelle is going to show you an example of how Nivolo's HR and CAD extensions for space management can leverage your native AutoCAD drawings to simplify and enrich end user experiences from anywhere within the ServiceNow platform. So I appreciate you inviting me today and I'll hand it back to Lauren for the fun stuff. Thanks, Chad. As another perk of attending today's webinar, we're gonna be giving away a $50 Visa gift card to someone that stays on the entire webinar. We'll be announcing the winner of that at the very end. I'll be monitoring the Q&A throughout today's session, so please send in any questions as they arise and we'll do our best to answer them in the Q&A section at the end. Now, I'd like to hand things over to Michelle Murtha, our presenter, to dive in. Thank you so much to both Lauren and Chad. Really appreciate both of your support today. So our presentation today is really focused on, you've already implemented your initial ServiceNow module, whatever that may be. Typically, it's IT service management, but not always. At that point in time, the management usually is like, great, now what do we do? What do we implement? How do we expand this footprint and get all the great, wonderful things that the ServiceNow platform can do, not only for IT, maybe in other parts of our organization. At the same time, you're probably being bombarded with all sorts of partners, such as Novolo, who have great options to help you expand that footprint. So what I wanted to do today is take an opportunity to share with you a very common way that people expand that footprint and really transform their organization. In order for any organization to really decide what they need to focus on, here's some of the types of questions that as GlideFast consultants, we would walk you through. First of all, look to some of those other internal service organizations, especially when they overlap with IT. As the world gets more and more connected, we know that the line between IT and HR, IT and facilities, and even IT and finance continue to get blurrier. There's a lot of shared data, and there's a lot of integrated services that are being provided by both organizations to the same customer. Also, definitely look at those third-party applications that ServiceNow has up in the store. Not everything that will help your organization comes directly from ServiceNow. In addition, look at those events that are happening in your company. Typically, they happen around employee events, but it doesn't always necessarily uh, relate to an individual employee. But look at those opportunities when you have multiple groups that are all serving a singular purpose, such as the case in onboarding or in offboarding, and there are many others. And then finally, once you feel like, hey, we think we found that opportunity that is really going to make a difference for our organization, because every organization is different and every organization is facing different things. So it's not a one size fits all. But when you find that one that you're like, hey, I think this is really where we should go, build that strong business case and demonstrate how not only sharing that data, but having that 
end-to-end -end service request that crosses those multiple service streams can truly benefit everyone involved. So in today's example, as Chad mentioned, we are going to look at onboarding. We are taking it from the perspective of a hiring manager who has picked their candidate and they've gotten an accepted offer. We now need to get them ready for day one. In the past, IT traditionally is the one place that managers go to get all of the systems access they need, their email address, their computer, their phone, any mobile devices they may need, get the right application access. IT is very central in bringing a new employee or worker, if it's a contractor, into the organization. In addition, you have to have a place for this person to sit, usually. In the days of COVID, a lot of us are working from home, so it would be understandable if you didn't need that. But there are definitely plenty of opportunities for facilities to be part of that, from simply setting up that office space, getting it configured correctly, maybe some ergonomic or furniture needs, and simply just tracking the space. And finally, in the HR system, of course, there are many things that need to be set up. The manager doesn't always know all of these things. A lot of them have to be provided by the employee. But we wanted to include HR in this so that you could see how you could seamlessly span all three organizations and the manager only has to go to one place. So if you're ready for this, I'm ready for this because I think this is pretty slick. Let me go into our demo. Here we are at the service portal. This is the basic service portal out of the box. What I can tell you about this demo is that we spent very little time configuring it. We only had a couple of things we had to do that with and there's no customization that we've done. So this is not some sort of vaporware or other, you know, crazy thing that we've mocked up. This is real and this is what we were able to build out with probably less than four hours of time. It really can be that easy. So. Here's ServiceNow, and as manager, I am Bailey Boss, and we're gonna go in and she's gonna request something. And, um, you know, we all know how the service catalog works. Again, I'm assuming that you are familiar with ServiceNow, and one of the most basic functions of ServiceNow IT service management is the service catalog. So we go in and we're gonna pick the new hire guide. And in this case, we're using something in ServiceNow called an order guide. I realize that uh, many organizations use order guides for all sorts of things. If you are not familiar with it, I highly recommend you look into it. It makes these types of scenarios where you have multiple request items so easy compared to uh, the past when maybe you were building out this full onboarding workflow and trying to pull in all of these disparate request items. If we have a chance at the end of the demo, if we have enough time, I will gladly show you what that order guide actually looks like on the back end. But here we are, and the very first thing they need to do is what's called describe needs. And this is a set of variables that you define. We started with an out of the box uh, demo, uh, request item or order guide that ServiceNow provided. So, what you're seeing here is mostly ServiceNow, slightly tweaked with a couple of additional things added. I will do my best to point out where we are leveraging HR module and where we are leveraging Novolo outside of IT. So as again, Bailey Boss here, I come in and we're going to go ahead and set this up. And we're going to say, uh, we are going to hire, his, the title of our new employee is going to be Guru of Stuff because employees have lots of stuff, right? Or companies, I should say. Uh, we're gonna give them a start date of, we're actually gonna go out to, oh, not that, sorry. I meant two-ish weeks, so two. Well, now I'm just a hot mess. Hold on, here we go. August 10th, that looks good. They're gonna start in two weeks or a little over a week, yeah. And then the new hired name here, naturally, because we have Bailey Boss, this is going to be Greg Guru-ish. And we have the hiring manager here. Again, 
ServiceNow gives you that capability to decide uh, maybe I was an administrative assistant and I was helping out Bailey Boss so I could change it. In this case, I am logged in actually as the manager, so I'm filling it in. Now, because this is the guru of stuff, naturally they're going to be in administration because administration has lots of stuff. Uh, will this be a remote employee? Um, this is an interesting question because what you're doing on this screen called Describe Needs is you are selecting and entering data that is then going to be used by the order guide to determine which request items apply to this scenario. For example, if this was a remote employee, we wouldn't need to set up an office for them and you wouldn't have to do that piece. However, for the purposes of the demonstration, we're going to say, no, they're not going to be a remote employee. They're going to be sitting on site and they need an office space. What office will they report to? So this is a list of uh, location sites. And in this case, we are going to go ahead and we're going to pick San Diego, California. I'm on the West Coast. Hi, everybody. So <laughs> we'll pick something a little closer here. And then finally, will your employee need anything non-standard? This was a question that came out of the box from ServiceNow, and the idea being that if you are a standard employee, you're going to get a standard setup of equipment. However, if you are in another department or if you need a special computer, uh, some other specialized equipment, you can say, yes, they need something non-standard. And then for this particular example, the question is, okay, which setup would they like? Do they want the developer setup or do they want the sales setup? And that could be different types of computers. You don't necessarily have to do it this way. This is just the way that ServiceNow had it already set up and I saw no need to change it. So we're gonna say they need a developer system. And on top of that, I want them to have an iPhone because obviously they're going to be some sort of a developer in the administration space. Then you click next and you get into what's called choose options. The reason it takes just a few seconds to render is because it's actually traversing a bunch of rules on the back end to determine based on that information entered at the described needs, you're determining what types of request items we should offer you. So now request items can be always as in we're always going to include this in this order guide, or it could be based on a variable. The very first one we see is actually the HR one, which we would always do. So we would say, okay, we're gonna alert HR of that new hire, start information, and then there's a bunch of others we're gonna go all the way through up to and including picking an office space for this person. Now, each one of these request items has their own set of variables and requirements. So the way ServiceNow handles that is we go ahead and we, we can open it, or if you click options, the same thing will happen. And you'll notice it carried over any variables that were in common with that request item. So we have, oh, it's the guru of stuff. And in this case, we're asking a simple question of the hiring manager related to when do you want to have that person go through orientation? And so at this case, we're gonna say, you know what, this is a guru, obviously, this is a very important person. And um, we're going to say, obviously, this guru needs a personal touch. We want to really make sure that they understand their benefits and have all those wonderful orientation uh, that, that we want to reach out and give that white glove service to. Fantastic. Okay. We're going to go through the other options here uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so in the case of the fact that it was a developer, they get offered what's called a MacBook Pro in this particular organization. We're gonna say, yeah, we want them to have Acrobat. They don't need Photoshop. Apparently this selection's already been chosen based on the fact that they're going to be a developer. And in addition, we can say, we want them to have Visio. And nothing terribly unusual from an IT request perspective. Now in the case of the external monitor, I'm gonna actually say they don't need that. Reason being, is the person who last had this position had a much bigger monitor than IT would provide. And we wanna keep that monitor. It's not being, you know, re, re picked up or, or going back to IT. So we don't have to request a new one. We're just gonna keep the one they have. They don't need the one that IT would offer. The new email account creation. This one is, is interesting because typically IT has had to make that decision as to what that email address should be. However, IT is also 
ever increasing the amount of automation they have. So especially in some of these smaller organizations where we do want to take advantage of as much automation as we can, we may say, you know what, let's go ahead and say, I think this is what their email should be. And only if that email isn't available, then it would kick out for some sort of manual intervention. But at this case, probably there's no other Greg Guru-ish at GlideFast, so we're going to go ahead and, and recommend that's the case. You'll also notice that any required fields do show up. Um, I'm actually going to pull that off for half a second. Um, up here at the top, it does a reminder that is mandatory fields, and then you can see which options has a mandatory field. It will not let you submit the order guide until you get those filled out. So again, all of those great rules that are part of the request item are now automatically included in this order guide. Then I'm going to go to the iPhone, and here we have a couple of choices. Oftentimes the employee would naturally pick this and the HR module in ServiceNow, if you haven't seen it, does have some really neat portals about being able to expose these choices to the employee before they even start. Uh, so definitely take a look at those or reach out to us if you'd like to see more. Um, but in this case, we're gonna say the manager is making these choices on behalf of the employee naturally because it's a developer, we want as many gigs of storage as possible. The corporate VPN automatically comes. Again, this might be one of those things that everybody just automatically gets no matter what their role is in the company. And then we get finally to the goodness, which Chad is waiting for, I can tell. <laughs> um, we are going to pick that, that workspace. And so, and notice as Bailey, I have no idea that this is necessarily part of the HR catalog and that these are part of the IT catalog and that this is part of the Novolo catalog. It doesn't matter. The order guide just mixes it all together and it all looks seamless to the person trying to enter the data. So in here, we've got some information and we see again, a bunch of stuff uh, got uh, populated. And so now we've, we've already picked at least the campus that they're going to be at, which is in San Diego, but there could be multiple buildings. So I have to pick the building. Okay. Fortunately, there's only one. I don't need to think too hard. <laughs> and then finally the floor. And in this case, there's only one floor offered and that's floor three. That could very well be because floor one may be a cafeteria and some external conference rooms and floor two may be executive offices and um, and the boardroom and maybe some training rooms so there is no space that i could potentially pick from it could also be that as a manager or selecting into administration it's already defaulting and saying oh well we know that administration only sits on floor three so you can build those business rules in to really help guide your managers and they don't have to necessarily navigate all of these choices. So we have a floor three. If I knew if this was an organization that every single office space and cube was already labeled with a, a unique identifier number, I may be able to go ahead and come in here and just pick that. Fantastic. However, Bailey Boss is a manager. She's way busy. She hasn't been able to walk by that cube. She doesn't really know what the state of it necessarily. And she knows only that she wants them to sit right outside her office on the, on the corner cube. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the floor plan. Now, the initial rendering of this floor plan, you may say, oh my gosh, that's not workable. But when we make it a little bit bigger and then I am just zooming in, you could certainly zoom in this way, but, um, I go ahead and zoom in here, I can start to see. Now, if these offices, I, I didn't, I will admit, I didn't actually take the time to populate all of the space data with names so that they actually show these are filled and these are not. However, any office that was already occupied can uh, or would uh, um, render in a different color. It would show like a pinkish red color typically out of the box. So green means go, right? So green means this is an available space. Yellow means it's not available because it's like a common or shared space. And then of course, again, red meaning it's, um, it's already been occupied. 
So I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, well, I sit here, so this is the cube I want. And I go ahead and I click on it. And um, it, it kind of really zooms in at that point in time and says, is this, are you sure? This is what you want. And it goes ahead and it takes that and it's populated it for me. So now there's no guessing. I didn't have to say, I want them in that empty cube right outside my office. Facilio knows exactly where I want to put them and they can then use that in their move platform to help set up the office space. Now I see I have a question in the queue. Um, so let me see what I can do with this. It says, how much data cleanup is required to use Novolo? For example, our location and data IT is a mess because it's all been put into freeform fields. That's very common. Don't feel bad about that. Um, so does all that have to be cleaned up before we can use Novolo Space Management Tool? The good news here is no. So Novolo does use a number of the core tables. For example, when we submit this, and I'm going to show you on the back end, it's going to go into uh, what's called a move request. However, that move request is an extension of the core task table. Same thing with the users. Those are all part of the core, and you can use all those core tables. However, Nuvolo was pretty smart when they did this because they knew that locations from an IT perspective are definitely not at the detailed level that facilities needs. Plus, on top of that, facilities often has spaces that IT would never even necessarily be aware of, such as the rooftops or basements where boilers are being kept. So they decided, they've created their application in the way that it is a scoped app, right, which is good. That is, that is standard practice and what ServiceNow requires and expects. However, they took the locations and they said, we need our own hierarchy and we're going to build that out. And then over time, they can work with IT to figure out how can IT then better utilize this information as well. I have actually had IT departments who wanted that level of facilities information and the floor maps. They adopted Novolo simply so they could find out where all their IT equipment is and have it tracked at that granular of a level. So no, you don't have to clean up all of those IT locations in order to take advantage of this. That's the good news. Now, you do have to invest the time into defining the new location hierarchy with your facilities team and get all that in there. And of course, Novolo being the awesome partner they are with ServiceNow, all of the same tools that you would do, use to load data into ServiceNow, as well as Chad mentioned, the integration with CAD now makes it super, super easy to bring that information in to ServiceNow. And Michelle, Chad? if I can add one thing, sure. um, if, you're, if you have a, a different situation where you're absolutely confident in what's in your CMN location table and, and everything has been kept up uh, perfectly, we can utilize that data and synchronize it with our location hierarchy, take advantage of the work that's being done, and also automatically update anytime you make changes. So we do find wow. that most people do not have a, a clean location hierarchy, and we're able to help with that. But if you do have something that you'd like us to leverage, we can synchronize that and use that as our source of truth at the site level. Fabulous. Thank you, Chad. You learn something new every day, even when you don't want to. Not that I don't want to, but still. <laughs> okay. Novolo is always growing and changing. Um, by the way, if you're not familiar with their platform, I've been working with them for, oh my gosh, probably about two years now. So uh, knowing that, uh, I want to share with you that they have releases about every six months, uh, similar to ServiceNow. They release patches regularly. They're a great partner with ServiceNow, uh, and, and they do try and keep up with all of the new feature sets and, and building out additional functionality also on their platform. Uh, to the extent that a couple of years back, ServiceNow actually said, oh, Novolo is now our partner, our, our only partner, really, from a location perspective. If somebody comes to them and says, we want facilities management in ServiceNow, ServiceNow had stopped investing in their facilities management, and they now partner exclusively with Novolo on this. So, um, and I'm really excited because I worked on that facility space management of uh, uh, ServiceNow module prior to Novolo, and uh, it, it had some good things, and Novolo has been able to build on all that awesomeness and take it to the next level, which is what was really needed for facilities service management. So, 
All right, that is my shameless plug for uh, for Novolo. Uh, I do see if you want to change the existing play to a different location and place a new hire in the desk, is that possible? Absolutely. So the way that you build this out could have a lot of different uh, ways to set this up. And it could be, I've, I've seen some of the other Navolo demos, and I highly recommend you reach out to Navolo to see those demos because there's only so much I can show you today. However, um, I do know that they have modeling that is a chain. Um, and if we were to submit and try and put this person in a location that was already filled, uh, then that would kick off something on the background for space management to, to reach out and say, okay, I see you want to put Greg in this space. However, what are we supposed to do with Sally? She's sitting there now. Um, so they would, they would work that out. Now, whether it's proactive actually at this time or reactive on the back end, uh, those are all definitely possibilities. Uh, the other thing I won't be able to show you today is that Novolo has a space planner workbench that really allows them to kind of play out some different move scenarios and get things lined up because sometimes you need to move a lot of people. And so I've got to move 20 people out of this area into another area and then I've got to move 10 in and then another 10 in and they've all got to figure out where everybody's sitting and sometimes there's even temporary staging locations. Novolo can help you with all of that in their space management. All right, I'm gonna go ahead at this point in time and I'm gonna click next. So what this is, is this is a little summary screen, um, very similar to any other shopping cart you would see in the IT service catalog space. And we see we've got our new hire start notica notification, our laptop, it'll expose costs if that's part of your catalog setup. We see we've opted out of the monitor we have a new email account, an iPhone, again, with some costs, the corporate VPN, and of course, the new employee workspace assignment. At this time, Bailey says, yep, that's what I need. I'm ready to go. So we go ahead and click order now. Whether or not you have an order confirmation screen is up to you. This came out of the box with the IT uh, new hire order guide, so I left it. Um, at this point in time, Bailey could put in something here like, um, I'll be out on Friday, uh, whatever that was, 8-7, I think. Uh, please leave laptop uh, with Alice Admin, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and check out. Yep, that is what I want. Now, in the background, it is creating three different tickets, and I'm gonna show you what those look like. The very first screen shown here, and again, this was the out of the box. We did not manipulate this. So I want you to see what actually happened out of the box and also how easy it would be to, to change this. But out of the box, it takes the employee uh, requesting something, in this case, Bailey, to the IT request summary screen. You could have taken them to a, a, a customized portal screen that actually showed all three tickets that just got submitted for them. But in this case, it's showing the request and all of the goodness that comes with having different items. Okay, now the one thing is out of the box, ServiceNow has set up this portal so that this is gonna show Bailey Boss all of the requests, not only from IT, but in this case, they also include the HR requests because it's another module in ServiceNow. It's this, particular uh, screen is reading out of that core task table and it has specific task types that it's looking for where Bailey Boss was the submitter or the requester. All I would need to do to get the Novolo space is add that task type into this query and then it would show up as well. Okay. We, again, did not modify it because I wanted you to see what happens out of the box, but also how simple it would be to get you to that point. So, at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and flip into the back end so you can see. Um, so, I'm in that same environment, but now I'm logged in as myself, which I'm an admin in this situation. Uh, this way I can show you all the goodies behind the scenes. So we go into the service catalog requests and we see that request first and foremost. 
and on here we have all the good things that you would expect from the IT service catalog. We've got the four IT items and then of course depending on which one I go into, uh, I may or may not have tasks depending on, on where we are and in this case it does. So and that's awesome because this was the email address and somehow we're doing procurement. Maybe it's because it's a Microsoft Office 365. I'm not sure but um, that's that's what this is on the back end here. So I'm not going to go into the IT path because again my assumption or expectation is most of you know how the IT service catalog works. Then we're going to go into the HR cases. If you've not seen HR's module, you'll notice that it is, sim uh, it is similar to IT but not identical in the sense that they're pretty simple in their tickets. They have a case. Now you can have different types of cases for sure and you can have different workflows or different uh, fields associated with different case types but obviously they don't have incidents and problems and changes and 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 all these different levels of tasks. They have HR cases and they have tasks and so what I'm looking at is basically a list of all of the active cases regardless of what they are. Um, yes, Bailey Boss has been very busy in this system getting ready for this demo. So we will look at the top one because that is the one that was just submitted. Checking to make sure it's working. Okay, and so here's the case. If you've not seen a case screen before, uh, case management is also what is used in customer service management um, in case you're ever interested in, in kind of what that looks like as well. GlideFast would be happy to help you with that. So the HR case, we see that this specifically is that new hire start notification item. So they can have multiple items that generate cases. Um, we've captured some information now. HR case in, in this particular scenario, we're not really using variables. So instead, what we did is we wrote a very simple script that simply took all of those variables and pushed them into the description. There are lots of ways, different ways you can do this. There's actually an out of the box HR example that is an automated example where an employee could go in and update their own personal information and it would update their user record automatically. So it doesn't always have to be a manual touch case. You can also have automated cases um, and you can have workflows. Um, and then, so we see all this information. We see that choice that, that we want to have that personalized orientation for the guru. And, uh, and then you can even have a checklist. And in this case, we've got a simple single checklist item which says schedule their orientation. All right. Um, the rest of this, I'm not really going to go over because we're not going to dig into HR today. Uh, but like all the other great things that ServiceNow provides us, you can make this screen what you need it to, and it would be potentially different based on each type of request. Um, and then finally, let's take a look at what's in the Novolo space. So Novolo doesn't have a case. Novolo has a lot of more different ticket types similar to IT in that they are built for purpose. So you have things like a move request, which then graduates into a, a move, like a planned move actually, or, or a, a scheduled move, if you want to think of it that way. You can also have, they offer uh, all kinds of scheduled maintenance tickets, like proactive maintenance. So for all the wonderful things that facilities or even your clinical, also called oftentimes the, the biomed or the biometrics um, teams in, in a more hospital setting, uh, being able to have all of your assets tracked and then ensure that regular maintenance is being done on them. You can also have break fix types of information, you know, hey, my, my, thermostat in my office is broken or the air handler is making a horrible noise, right? There's a spill on the floor. So all of those options, whatever it is that you guys need to reach out to facilities for, they have solutions to help you and a lot of that is out of the box. Um, it's very um, easy and actually honestly very fun to work on the Nivolo platform. Okay, so let's take a look at this move request because that in this case, that's what we chose was an item that generates a move request. And um, so, so here's some information. You notice that because this is a new hire, um, we were able to push in that this is automatically an individual 
that's being moved. We're not doing a group move. Okay, so going back to that question that was asked around, you know, could I model multiple moves? Could I say, okay, well, not only do I need to put Greg here, but that means Sally has got to go. Um, with that in mind, you might have this, this could actually look different depending on what the scenario is. Um, but in this case, it's individual and it's a new hire. Out of the box, you have all of these choices. It's a group. It could be a self move. It could be a transfer of some sort. And then you also can have, well, why? Why are we setting this up? Why do we have this move? And in this case, pretty obvious, we're hiring somebody new. Um, but it could be any of these other reasons. And you can even associate prioritization with those if you would want to. All right, um, and then in this case, again, we didn't necessarily expose all the variables live in this move request. We simply wrote them all into the description that can be used. If you were gonna be doing some more automation with this and maybe it wasn't a move request, you would probably have to have more fields that would update the other fields, but um, for, for the move request purposes, we're able to just put that all into the description and keep it fairly simple. And then um, in the case of the move request, um, what, what would happen, I, I'm not a space planner, so, <laughs> but uh, my understanding is they would then say, okay, they would pick some sort of a planned move scenario, um, which they probably would have a very basic one for, okay, I want you to go set up the office. I want it to look like this. I want it to be set up like this. I want this furniture ordered, whatever the case is. They would, they would, pick that scenario and that would generate these move line items that then the other people in facilities, you could think of these move line items almost like a, a, a task maybe or or a procurement line item. So I don't to know, Chad, add, if you want to talk about that. <laughs> sure, to, to add to that a bit, uh, when you're first setting this up, the guided setup will take you through some of these steps and depending on the size of the organization, you may have one person who's responsible for all of the planning and actual physical moves when someone new joins the organization. In larger companies, you may have uh, multiple groups with lots of different people who are responsible for each one of these individual tasks. So we can turn on and turn off things like the, the move scheduler and the ability to adjust a move once it's been submitted enable things like uh, patch and paint and anything else that you need to add into your specific move work request as a, a standard template and then you can turn on and turn off specific activities based on the conditions of an individual move. So all of this is configurable when you first set it up, you'll have a template and then once you start to submit actual requests, you can uh, add in additional items, just like if you're requesting a, a new monitor with a specific size, maybe it's ADA compliant, you can do the same thing with a, a move where based on the conditions, you may need to have additional steps that are required um, as part of that move request. Fabulous, thank you, Chad. Okay. And then the last thing I promised I'd give you just a small sneak peek because we're running a little behind here, but I will give you a sneak peek on the order guide. So if I go ahead and I go into the new hire order guide, if you've never seen this before, it's pretty slick. Um, so like any typical request item, you know, you pick what catalog it's going to be in and under what category and you have some choices here, you give a description, but the real magic, I think, I love that IT is like being a magician sometimes. Um, <laughs> the real magic here comes in, so these variables you hopefully recognize as being on that front screen. Um, and of course you can have variable sets, but the rule base, it's this rule base that really makes this rock. So in this case, this rule base, you can see you've got that new hire start notification. And so for example, if I go ahead and I click into that one and look at that rule, Basically, this is saying we're always going to include this because there is no filter condition. Okay, however, if I go down to, I'm going to go in this case to that developer laptop that we ended up using and selecting in our scenario, we can see that it has um, some filter conditions. And so, in order to get this developer laptop, Mac, to show up in the request items that are available at the order guide time, 
is the laptop type, that's the name of the variable, had to be set to developer, which hopefully you remember me doing that. And then this one, this is actually, we called it the double negative because it says standard packages, yes. What it actually means is yes, I need something other than standard. So, and we did choose that. We said, yes, I need something non-standard. And it was only when both of those things were true then that option was uh, offered in the order guide. So this is where that magic happens, okay? And you can um, build these wonderful order guides with, with very complex business rules without having to create massive UI scripts to toggle things on and off on a gigantic screen that has 50 fields for the manager to fill out. That was the old school. Some of you probably weren't with service now back when we had to do it that way so <laughs> you may not remember those days but those of you who do those were dark times okay let's go ahead and jump back into the presentation and finish this up um, so by using all of these different technologies that seem like they're standalone and they are absolutely standalone but by bringing them together and looking at that end-to-end -end experience uh, we're able to work smarter and not harder. We're able to transform our organizations and really delight our customers, whether those are internal employees in the case of Bailey Boss or even our external employees. So we want to get and give, obviously, as much flexibility as we can. Business rules are becoming increasingly complex. Every geography, if you are part of a uh, an international company or a global company that has all these different rules depending on the location, all of those can be built in to a, an order guide very simply and give you that flexibility. Novolo gives you a lot of flexibility, whether it's delegated space planning or being able to pick right off of a, a floor plan. And then obviously all of the great automation, whether it's IT automation, automation into HR systems, or automation into the space management systems. We also want to make sure that we're providing the information when and where it's needed. The last thing you want is to have someone on the back end trying to track down, wait, where did they want that again? And now they have to go dig through emails to try and find the right answer. And a heaven forbid, there's been a spate of emails back and forth. And now you accidentally re reference something that happened earlier in the thread and you didn't use the, the final answer. So bringing everybody together in one platform, what would happen in this case if all of a sudden Greg says, oh my gosh, I can't start on the 10th, I need to start now on the 18th, or they wanted to bring it up to that previous Thursday for some reason. Having all of these groups in the system gives you the power to be able to do things like that and set up those types of scenarios where you can quickly disperse fresh information right back out, reset your SLAs on all those fronts and, and get doing the business of, of what you need to work on instead of just trying to track down the information. Delight your customers. From Bailey's perspective, I hope you guys saw how easy this was. This would make any manager happy on any given day because right now in a lot of organizations, they have to go to five different sites or more just to get an employee set up. So let's make their lives easier so they can focus on the work of the business. They can be a manager, they can support their team and not have to get stuck in you know, a paperwork uh, black hole. And finally, transform. Right? That's why we're all here. We want to make a difference in our world. And whether that's making a difference in the world of our ultimate end customers by having fantastic products that transform their lives or just delighting our internal customers and making it easier for them to get their job done, that's what this is all about. So I hope you learned something. And I am officially into the Q&A section. And I see we have a question. So I'll go ahead and address it before I kind of turn it back over to Lauren. So that says, this was a great example. What other groups and types of requests have you seen that expand ServiceNow footprint? That is an awesome question. And um, I'm going to back up for just a second and go back to my initial slide, which kind of talked about some of the scenarios. We picked a very obvious one, uh, and we loved that it touched facilities and HR and IT. However, there are other organizations that I have seen IT integrate with for a number of things. So 
I'm, first, I'm going to tackle what other things could cross HR and facilities. Uh, so not only do you have your onboarding and your offboarding, but you could also have transfers and obviously moves are a big thing. Um, HR has to be notified at any time someone moves. There are often a lot of laws on the back end that HR has to be able to say, I know where someone's sitting, so I know how to tax them basically. So having that ability for facilities to automatically update that information into a system where HR can then utilize that exact same location information is critical. Um, and I worked once with an organization where they said, you know what, we're at a point where we're actually shrinking, not growing. So we're going to be doing more offboarding than onboarding. So they actually started their journey with offboarding. Um, finance and legal, these are two other areas that I have seen footprints be expanded. If you are using ServiceNow to do your IT asset management, and especially if you also have Novolo to do your facilities IT asset manage or your facilities asset management, excuse me, <laughs> if you have asset management happening in ServiceNow, whether that's physical or even software, having a legal component already like an integration into legal and having legal use service now to do the contract management piece is very, very valuable because from an IT manager's perspective, I can at the click of a button literally kick off a contract review or renewal process and we know exactly which assets are covered in that because we have the CI information. Um, and then from a finance perspective, think about reorgs. We all do reorgs and um, when that happens so many of these other organizations have to know what's going on now that reorg could be simply a paper reorg and so we have to change maybe some cost centers and finance and we need to reorganize where people are reporting up through from a payroll perspective in HR or it could be a physical reorg so not only did we move everybody around and change where they report, but now we need to physically move them into all these different areas. And again, that is something that facilities can really help with those large scale move models. So both uh, great questions so far. Any other questions or Lauren, did you have anything else at this time? No, it looks like that was all the questions that um, came in. But if anyone does have any questions, feel free to reach out to the GlideFast team or the Novolo team through their websites, or you can contact Michelle directly at michelle.murtha at glidefast.com or chad at chad.till at novolo.com. Um, and it looks like those were all the questions and all the time we had for today. So I'd like to announce the winner of our $50 Visa gift card. And it looks like the winner is Alex Peterman. Congratulations, Alex. We're going to email you your prize directly. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. We hope you found it super informational. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Big thank you to Chad Till from Novolo for joining us for this GlideFast on air. And thank you to Michelle Murtha for giving us a great um, presentation today. To see any more um, GlideFast on air webinars, please just visit us at our website and they're all listed there. Thank you so much everyone and have a great day. Thank you.